and welcome back to Empire Total War 2 with this Polish-Lithuanian campaign. The year is 1728 and I have successfully subdued Brandenburg. We brought down what we brought down the town and the Prussians and in between episodes I've also brought down one uh, rebellious uprising. Rebellious Uprising. I could just have said Uprising. We brought down those. And uh, to hold control over the province, I have also added four infantry. The four infantry from Western Prussia and four infantry from Silesia. These two were border provinces before, so they had the, the guard units, or the regiments that were set up to guard. Uh, so I brought in eight extra regiments of infantry to hold the town. And we're just barely holding on to it right now. Currently, the resistance to foreign occupation is 24. Clamor for reform is 12. And then cultural unrest is 16. We're looking at a lot. That's, what, 40, 52 points. Uh, currently, garrison troops is 20. Uh, military crackdown is 3. Uh, predicted to go to 2. Town watch is 12. Uh, people in government 1. Government buildings and so on. Um, hopefully though, we are we are actually switching the province rather quickly. A lot quickly, a lot quicker than I thought. It's roughly 1% per turn. And it also helps the fact that the province is starving. Uh, so there's less people to convert. Uh, a horrible way to look at it, but, um, you know, that's one way for it. Uh, with us having subdued the, the Prussians, that is one of the, the uh, three factions that we want to bring down. Uh, and with, as we saw last time, the Austrians attacking the Pope of all people. I don't know why, they just went a line through here into Italy. And with that, they've made a lot of enemies, among others Spain, and the Ottomans also, for some reason. Uh, so we'll end up actually on the same side as the Ottomans in this war, as I'm about to declare war on the Austrians. Also, the Austrians are suffering from bankruptcy. Uh, could be because their home province is exempted from tax. Um, so they have a, a massive problem with revolts in their home province just by their own people um, so we need to attack for two reasons I don't want to turn in, into a republic and I need to break them down and also it would be nice to re-establish uh, Mr. Pope and Venice as well I'm not gonna hold on to Venice we're gonna hand that back to the Venetians um, also, during all of this, I've been building a lot of my provinces. So building them up, setting them up, building all kinds of... Build, that was a bad example because it's tearing stuff down. But I've been building up stuff and I've been um, using all this to research a lot of technologies. I also managed to... A lot of people are not willing to trade technologies with me, but I was actually able to trade with the Marhathans to get a really important one just like before I started this episode which was selective breeding which I got from them it was pretty expensive I had to part with I think these three technologies division of labor consent by government and utilitarianism so pretty you know high gear stuff plus like 12,000 uh, and also with that, 12,000 isn't that much when I'm making 18,000, almost 19,000 per turn. And that is even with having lowered the tax for the middle class. Um, because I'm r making so much money that we've actually been able to lower the taxes for the middle class. Uh, with that, we should put these funds to good use, as I've been using it a lot to upgrade the uh, provinces. There isn't much to be upgraded right now, although I would need another round of uh, money being spent on the selective breeding. Right now, I'm currently focusing in 
on the provinces that still have towns that needs to be upgraded. Uh, some of which aren't currently not growing. So they need to be added onto there. So I focused in on them. And um, I think there might be still some areas that I might want to build these or add on to. But otherwise, I feel like I should really put a lot of it in even more soldiers. And then also, we should see about actually building a navy. And with that, because currently I'm basically trading with everyone I can trade, and then some. Um, and with all the trade ports I've got, I don't need any more trade ports. You know, we, we, we're we not even using this one. Um, and this one either. So, I'm putting to good use. We got, we've built a shipyard here. But I'm also going to build a shipyard here in Brandenburg. So, we're going to have... So, we're going to build... Um, military navy. And... The important bit is to build it against Sweden. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but Sweden, for all this, have yet to build up Malmö again. It's still on fire, which is on point for Malmö being on fire. Um, but I don't know why they're not repairing it. Like, they're probably missing out on so much cash. Um, so I don't know what that's up with, but yeah. What was that unit? It was an odd-looking unit. Mounted Jaegers. It looked like he had a turban on. Hmm. Um, anyways, with all that said, I think what I'll do, looking at what we have for the capital, there isn't much to be said about this, so I think this one is not a battle. I'll, I'll just show the sort of the end. I'll just show the, um, the normal one I show for the end, and then we'll see if we can actually meet one of these larger armies, although I think because they don't have the money, they, it might be that they have not been able to properly set up their troops. We'll see what kind of fight I'm getting into against this. I'm also interested to see who's going to join uh, Austrians in the defense against me. Um, Marie Anne the first. 26 years old against um, King August. He's been with us from the start. 28 years old. No. 58. 28. He wished he was 28. Um, right. Off we go to war. I'm not going to call my allies because I feel as though as soon as the ally allyship with Russia is broken, they're going to declare war on me. And I don't want to start a two-front war, so that's why I'm not going to call any of them. If I want to call them, I'm going to—I'm pretty sure you can request them to join, like in the middle of the war. Maybe that's just a Napoleon thing, but um, if I would need, they—they're not really going to do anything. The allies, the allyship, I feel is more just like keeping them from attacking me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and declare war. Okay, Maratha Confederacy joins, which isn't going to mean anything because they're in bloody India. Uh, Bavaria joins. Okay, so that's that's a little bit more pressing because we've got border with them. Um, United Provinces. United Provinces doesn't even hold its own home. The French hold that, so I don't think they're going to be a problem. Great Britain is a little bit more about trouble. Okay, so ev basically everyone joined them. Württemberg, Bavaria, Mahathan Confederacy, the uh, Sathavid, the Council of Three Fires, Apache in Inuit nations. Even the Eskimos go after me. I guess they see it as a opportunity to um, strike at me. So what we're looking at here is we are at war with the Bavarians. Which, as of right now, I don't think they're going to be threatening Prague as of yet. As soon as this army is ready to move, it will move down against the Bavarians. Uh, Württemberg, same there. I mean, that's not going to do anything. 
The thing that I'm wondering here is if I'm able to lay waste to the Bavarians and maybe able to force them to become vassal or something like that. Because I've been thinking about doing that for some of the smaller nations. I just want to see here if I have the opportunity to uh, press... No, join a war is not in the stars for um, empire. That's just a Napoleon thing. Right. I feel as though a lot of my allies would abandon me in this war and not join me. And the worst one of... Yeah, I've already said. I've already gone through that part. So, before we go into battle again, Vienna, which will be like the third battle of Vienna, I'm not sure. Uh, w there's a new member. Uh, the six pounder horse artillery is now Kirkman's Gunners. And with that, once more, attack the Austrian capital. They get some shit infantry here and there. Now, they do have upgraded in terms of the military. So they have new units. So they have units that are on par with us or in terms of like uniform. They still have some of the old units. You know, I'm wondering here, if I just lay, keep laying siege here, that will give me time to build up more troops that I can use to hold the capital and then the army can move march on. And then we can also bring up these um, cavalry that will join in. Oh yeah, I've uh, since I've been expanding, getting a lot of big territories, I've been getting a lot more of these noblemen to the point where I now have um, this guy is on his way. So that will be six, seven, eight noblemen. Uh, I'm trying. What I'm trying to build is that this one will be the military one, because these guys have military. So military writer plus two, and then armchair general plus one. So that's specific for military, a little bit for factory, but three points for military. So that's good. Uh, this guy was uh, factory master. So a little bit for factory with the ones in there. This guy is basically good at anything, as I recall. Although, yeah, he's everything except military, basically. Actually, more enlightenment. Enlightenment gets two points, I believe. Yeah. Enlightenment gets two points, but he gets plus for research for a lot of these. Just random or just research at large. So... It's kind of all over. It's also one of the bigger universities or like upgraded universities. And then the other guy is actually military. Um, and maybe I should send him up there. And then there was one guy up here that didn't have anything. Right? Uh, this guy. This guy has nothing. So they could actually trade places now when I think about it. And then we can focus... Even more military up in Lithuania. And then over here, I can't remember what I put here. Industry and industry. So industry guys over here. Two extra points in industry. We don't have anyone in the Magdeburg as of yet. But maybe they will get more uh, guys in there soon enough. Right, so all the gentlemen are at running about. With that, let's go ahead and enter... And uh, see how our enemies, the big enemy alliance, responds to this declaration of war. Would you look at that? As soon as war is declared, oh, there's a new sultanate. There's a new sultan. Mahmud I. Maybe then he looks to, once again, rekindle the war against us. Right. The Ottomans have declared war. I'm not going to call on my allies, once again, for the same reasons. Th at this point, it would be the worst time to test out if the allies would actually join. And then end up having Russia joining in the war. 
Um, so we're not going to call them. Hopefully none is going to... Usually when the AI declares war, no one joins them. So let's hope that we don't get even more enemies uh, to join us. Although these guys are also... Why is, why is everyone allied with the Eskimos? So almost... I mean, almost... Immediately, my plans for this episode falls absolutely flat. Uh, military technology, we're working a little bit on that. Our trade was raided for a little bit over there. And then we've been building up a few things. We're uh, trying to change the culture everywhere. To make sure that maybe I can resume taxing them at a higher level. With that, ooh, my true, my uh, income actually fell by about almost four thousand. That wasn't good. Right, we're gonna keep the uh, siege going here, and we're gonna see about recruiting extra troops. As it is, then the Ottomans are advancing into my territory. Absolutely awful. Uh, battle area. It's really a, it'll be a huge battle. I feel like we should almost bring the, the um, cavalry units back down, but I think we have enough in this army. Uh, I was hoping to use the new Kirkman's guns because I was interested to see how I was going to be able to use them. Also, I just generally, I think we need to deploy a lot more cannons for the armies. Like, they're so huge now that, you know, two batteries of demi cannons don't do enough. Unfortunately, we're still on the garrison artillery that can't really move anywhere. Um, so, we're gonna have to uh, get those horse guns going with us. But, yeah, I've built, I built a fort here. And the Ottomans are going around it. So, we're gonna bring this army. This is the Olympic army. It's going to be brought around and attacked the Ottoman through here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be a heavily wooded area and it's going to favor the enemy or if it's going to favor me. But there we go. I could push forward and attack Sophia. But I think it's better to smite the Ottoman army right here. So without further ado, let's has, have ourselves a giant battle. They bring in about 9,000 men to start with. They've got movable 12 pounder guns. Why don't I? Awful range on them though. 825, 5,000. It's not that bad, but. And then in the reinforcement, it looks like they're bringing in about 7,000 men. So they have double our size. And this army is uh, new. It hasn't been used in battle before. Um, some units, of course, the winged hussars, the artillery, the general, and Dylan's brigade is the uh, veteran unit. Everyone else is fresh. So we'll see how this goes. Although, what I can see from the ornaments, it's the same for them. Obviously, since we are outnumbered quite heavily, we'll have to take a defensive posture, at least to start off with. With that said, let's draw into battle, shall we? The Ottomans keep moving away from me, and I'm gonna see if I can trigger them into an attack. Now, my army is unfortunately not in position, really, yet. But I want to see if I can trigger an attack. By taking out these cannons right here and really striking at the Ottoman force. So here is where we start off. Oh, their guns respond. Let's see, the Hussars now striking their light infantry, which do not stop to fight. But instead, continue to run. The artillery was taken down. Some losses, though, among the Hazars. Um, and so, a few losses here among these Hazars as well. But we actually run 
the entire regiment down with only a handful of losses for all the regiments. Now, hopefully, I think this will activate the Ottomans to actually come meet me in battles. So I don't have to go around chasing them all the time. Which seems perfect. And uh, we will rejoin once the battle lines are drawn and ready to fight each other. We're looking at the start of the enemy's initial cavalry attack, as the AI usually does. Throwing their cavalry away in foolish charges right at the start. Uh, cavalry there being dealt by Dylan's brigade, and then we've got the new guard infantry, which uh, contains the membership units. Here is uh, Wyatt's regiment. Taking quite the beating from a Mamluk charge. Um, eventually, though, they should. Let's not waste any troops unnecessarily, since they're not. Oh shit! No, 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 no. That could have gone pretty bad. Or a lot worse than what happens. Okay, we've got. Quite the attack of cavalry coming in here as well, forming square. Out here is where we've got the Nexov, uh, Nekosov uh, regiments. Not really going to bother by with the pronunciation right now, as when we, this uh, brigade is heavily onset by cavalry attacks. Uh, we've got the entire Ottoman line following up here. Um, let's see the cannons. Yeah, continue to fire on the troops there, that's fine. Okay, the Istanbul guys are coming back again, trying to attack by it. There's another cavalry charge. Goes in on an angle, these are the meat and potato line infantry as I call them. And then we've got the Lithuanian riflemen. Um, starting to shoot here. Okay, so the squares are holding here in the woods and the cavalry is not really able to punch through. Over here we've got the Hussars. In reserve I've got the uh, winged Hussars. Cannons continue to fire onto that. And it looks like they are finally broken. The archers there. They're a problem. I'm gonna send in a winged hussar to deal with that. Because those guys cannot be allowed to persist. Okay, guards back into position. As soon as these guys are broken, uh, most of the cavalry is gone. I think the guard infantry and uh, Dylan's regiment should swing up against the Ottomans here. Uh, so far, these are holding on. Uh, not going to bother them by moving the Hazars into an attack. We're trying to save their strength. The bows here are going to do a lot of damage if they're allowed to continue to fire there. Right, they've dealt with their target, so I'm going to order Dylan forward. And then we're going to have um, the guard infantry start moving like this. Are we taking heavy casualties from the archers? I would say uh, very likely, right? Move to the side. And allow an opening for the hussars. And then the hussars going to move into that opening. And then charge these guys down. Comes kind of perfect as the artillery just fire their rounds. Alright. Here comes the Hazars. And then order them to attack. We've got some nomad warriors from North Africa getting sent away. Soon enough, the Armenian archers will. Do the same. 
We're heavily on set on this side. Um, some units have dropped their square. I think this one can drop its square. You can go back into square. You can drop your square and kind of head there. I think we're going to have to deploy the Hussars there. Um, you can head back in to the formation. Heavy attack right here. Not entirely sure why not the entire unit isn't firing at the troops right ahead of them. Right, you can close the gap. Can I get artillery fire just bouncing through here, maybe? I think for the winged hussars now, rather than try and open small holes like that, let's try and swing these guys around. And then we'll have Dylan. I think we need to aim the cannons higher because right now Tunai is getting hit in the back. Okay, heavily onset over here. They've been fighting hard. Oh, we lost one here. No, there's these guys are in the square. Um, I think these guys are probably broken enough. Well, they've got trouble enough that if I order a counterattack together with the Hussar charge. I think we can break through. At the same time, heavy fighting right here. So much. Okay, so we've got some of these. One unit out of the brigade has broken. The other, though, hold on. This is kind of hard to see what's going on in the woods. Okay, the Hussar. Yeah, keep going after whatever that is. Is this the Hussar regiment? No, that was the infantry one. The Hussars. I need the Hussars out there. Okay, these Hussars going bonkers, just going through everything. Can I organize? This brigade of infantry. Get them out of the woods. Ooh, look at that. That one's... Uh, oh, they've even formed square here. Let's get the hussars in towards the center. Because uh, there's a massive amount of troops retreating over there. And as that is happening, I want the... Um, Lithuanians to move up so they can attack the square. And then we've got the line infantry coming up. Hussars, didn't I order you to come around here? I got two Hussars. Massive amount of fleeing Ottoman troops. Cannons at this point. You know what? Cannons can fire the bloody camel gunners. But it's a mass break of all the, like, all Ottoman troops here. And... Surprisingly good amount of troops still left in these regiments. Probably want to make sure that as much of this is gone as possible. Um, let's open up. For the winged hussars to come through and join in this uh, massacre. And also, like, break the camel gunners. Camel gunners are broken. Artillery ordered to hold. Fire. Hazards continue to go after these, and then the winged hazards coming in. 
Let's go ahead and take a look. Hazar's having a field day. As the Ottomans are running all over the field. And now the, the power of the winged Hazar's is being joined in to that. You can close that again. I think we rode over quite a few of the... Uh, now, Wyatt has already lost because of other, other problematic stuff. Right. Dylan turned to face this one. Continue after the Ottomans. Okay, it's hand water bastards. Alright, 16th Regiment come in, attack them through the back. Let's see, how many of my Hussar units are actually standing? Two. Well, it is the, it is the first battle, and they have been um, sent to dealt with a lot of enemy troops. Right, back into formation. The Hussars, the winged Hussars, should be able to deal with a lot of these. Let's see if, hopefully, more of my Hussars rally. I don't see where they are. I think they've left the field, unfortunately. Or it should really only be one, right? Because I have three of each. Cannons, you do have targets up here. There, up there is the third hussar to join in the massacre that is now occurring as we are chasing down all these uh, retreating enemy troops. Now I just need to keep an eye out for uh, the reinforcements, but it could be that there's so many troops on the battlefield here that um, the battle will actually be over before any reinforcements actually make it onto the field and I will win that way but we'll see this uh, went really easy actually we uh, held the line and there it comes the victory message and Rather than sit here and fight and having to fight the reinforcements, I think just by beating them, the reinforcement armies should lose troops as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and end it right here.
And here's the result of the battle. We deployed almost 9,000 men against 16,000 of the Ottomans. We lost about 2,000 men, while the Ottomans lost a whopping 12,000 men. We have about 7,000 men remaining after the battle against 4,000 Ottoman troops. And, as you can see here, everyone gained experience. Some, quite a lot. Let's go ahead and take a look at who killed what. Two Hussar units are up to 800 and 750 each, followed by winged Hussars. We've got one line infantry here, which has 272 remaining, 500. Lithuanian riflemen lost 85, killed 500, and so on. And even the general staff is awarded 38 kills. Wonderful victory against the Ottoman incursion. The Ottomans thought that we were um, strung out weak as we were fighting uh, the big European alliance. It's going to cost me 5,000 to replenish this. Uh, luckily, I've got tons of money. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to pursue them and see if we can't uh, take Bulgaria from them. Pleasure garden and barracks. Good, uh, good, uh, what's it called? Good reward after a uh, stunning victory over the Ottoman army. The siege will continue here. What I will do is that we will start to recruit troops. One thing that I did notice up here in Brandenburg is that I can recruit Prussians. But they're called forcibly recruited Prussians. And I think we have forcible recruited militia as well. Um, what I think we do is we'll have some unit that isn't part, I guess, line infantry is the one. Um, I'm kind of using the greens as um, a force to keep them down, but I wonder if veteran of garrison dragoons because they have the ability to uh, garrison policing bo bonus so I wonder if I should get them it's gonna take two turns though to get those but they'll stand out compared to the others so it'll easy easy for me to organize and hopefully that policing bonus is uh, gonna do a lot to hold uh, Vienna down With that, there's no more moves to make, and no one else has really made any moves against us. So, let's go ahead and end turn, and see what our enemies can do against us. Right, the Ottomans are slipping through with a force. I won't be able to chase them down. What I'm thinking, though, is I could probably use these guys to go after them. I didn't think the Ottomans were going to come at me since they just lost the battle. Um, not Dylan's line infantry. Four units of line infantry. We'll hope they'll uh, be recruited in time to defend this area. Um, I do have troops here, but they won't reach and you will make your way down towards... They've completely abandoned Bulgaria. Huh. Um, I guess these guys could actually start to march against this. As we probably need as much as we can to deal with this force. Even though it's already been slightly broken down. Um, maybe I should have Garrison Dragoons being recruited up here as well to make sure that I can get this army out moving as soon as possible. And then we should get more of the horse artillery. I'm thinking most of these armies have two, at least two demi cannons. This one has three, so that one's not super necessary that then it needs more. But let's see, where can I else get these? 
let's say two, two, three for each. So this one needs another two. That one down there needs two. And then this one might only need actually two for all of them, I think. So it's twelve hundred oh twelve hundred each. No, that's not the horse drawn one. So we'll get five recruited there. Actually, I should see about what the bonus for the cavalry actually does before we recruit any more of them. Um, right, 7,000. Let's go ahead and make sure that we capture this and I want to see if they go off this. And then we might fight the Austrians. They're three turns until surrender. It's good. It would be interesting to see what they've actually lost in terms of numbers due to the siege. But with that, let's go ahead and end turn and see if the enemy comes against us. Sneaky Ottoman! Uh, they move against Klausenberg, so I send my troops that way. But then they double back and they actually attack Belgrade instead. Which makes sense, Belgrade is more a hove cap, or like it's the spider in the middle of the web of this area where a lot of roads lead through that, so it's more important than Klausenberg. I think I have a pretty good chance of winning this battle. They only have about, what, 600 men more? Uh, we'll see though, we'll see. Onwards to battle. The battle has begun. I have taken the high ground of the hill and we've seen off two cavalry attacks. Currently we've got the enemy marching upon us. I'm sending out my pikemen and they're going to deal with the hand mortars, hopefully, as uh, the other three regiments provide fire cover. Um, so we'll hope for the best here with the pike regiment. I mean, at this point, the Pike Regiment is really obsolete, but I feel like the uh, Hand Mortar could probably do quite a bit of damage to me if I le if they are left unchallenged. I'm gonna have the 20th Regiment marching in here to aid, seeing if the um, Pike Regiment starts to run into trouble. I think we're going to form them into square. It's probably going to be uh, most productive in this situation and we might actually get quite a few kills. Um, so risk here, allowing the uh, provincial squad to fire upon the enemy while they're in melee here. But I think we will be fine. Apparently we're fighting archers. Oh sh shit, they've got another one of those bloody mortars. Okay, so my victory, chance of victory is uh, getting reduced rapidly as we speak. We're gonna have to uh, moving quickly here and hope to uh, destroy large parts of the enemy force before okay, we're going to form a lot of squares like we've got uh, melee unit joining in I formed these two into squares to uh, prepare them not only for the cavalry but to better their morale as I'm not entirely sure they will hold out in the long run. Pike Square I feel is probably the unit that will break first. Ooh, there goes our general or the commanding captain of the area. And unfortunately Garrison Line Infantry Regiment is broken by a small unit of archers. But then also, I guess, the Delhi Horsemen firing into them didn't aid. Um, 
We're looking at the other two regiments wavering now as well. 20th foot is still holding on. But they're starting to waver as well. I'm going to form them into square and hope that that helps a little bit. For them to regain the morale. The problem is we're going to have the uh, remnants of the pikes running straight through them. Obviously unsettling the unit. And then also we've got the Janissaries charging in. Maybe what I should have done is sit atop the mountain firing down upon them for as long as possible. Okay, so we only have one regiment left now. It looks like Belgrade is going to fall. What I'm going to have to do then is send in the cavalry and see if maybe the Moldovans will be able to join in and uh, save this area. Hopefully, the, these guys are holding on quite a bit, actually. Encourage. Cohesion is chaos. Okay, they just dropped the square. Thing is, in this melee, we definitely are at a disadvantage. If they hold out long enough, maybe one of these units will rally. Okay, so maybe the 19th will rally. They do a determined counter charge into the enemy. But that actually breaks the unit. <laughs> and uh, I just lost Belgrade to the bloody Ottomans. We end up losing our entire force, and the enemy lose about 800 men, so they have a thousand men left. Uh, unfortunately for me though, they have now seized Belgrade. So this is what I've been worrying about, and why I haven't dragged Russia into through the alliance. Look at what they're um, asking for here. They're actually what they want to, they want the Livonian region. And they're going to give me Astrakhan, which is God knows where out here. And then they want to give me Tripoli as well, which is down here in today's Libya. Wow. No, obviously not. Well, this episode took a turn. We went from going to war with the Austrians to actually fighting the Ottomans the entire episode and actually losing a territory. Uh, although not for long, I imagine. Military statistics. Just in time to record a defeat. Uh, we've got port block by uh, Ottoman Navy. Trained gained by military writer. Okay, so who... Wait, which one is this? Ah, oh, military writer. Was this the guy? He is... I think this guy was upgraded then. So now... In terms of military, we got a lot of military points concentrated here, which is good. Uh, troops being recruited. the um, And then the garrison troops. Silesia, we are upgrading there. Get rid of this. And I want to see the garrison bonus. Seven. 
for... I mean, it is 7 units, basically. It's not... It wasn't that... Um, good. And they're pretty expensive as well. It could be that the garrison bonus comes in when they're actually holding a province that is um, about to revolt like this one right here. Um, they'll be backing up that army. So far the Austrians have sent no troops in to reinforce that area at all. Um, we are fully upgraded now for this army or we're back in terms of numbers. There's only about 4,000 men heavily in favor of me winning that battle. Uh, my cavalry quickly is going to move down over here and lay siege. Unfortunately, I cannot take the settlement because uh, I need cannons or infantry, I guess, to actually lead a charge. Although I do have infantry coming down from here, Klausenberg, that was recruited. Um, I've got plenty enough troops, so it should be an easy enough battle to win. And then the Moldovans can actually go back to defend their home region instead. Now we actually got the third barracks ready to be built. What kind of troops will be available then? The troops that will be available will be formed into the 4th army. I've got plenty, I was about to say, I've got plenty enough money. Uh, I guess a lot of the money was lost due to the blockade of the port. Unfortunately, yeah. A lot of areas are blocked there. Right, but the thing is, I feel like I've done a lot in this episode. And... I've set up the battles now. Now it's only about playing them. So I think in the next episode we'll just go through and play the battles. So there's three of them. Um, it could be that I auto-resolve. At least this one I think could be auto-resolved. And then I'll have to play these two. But I feel as though I've been doing a lot of episodes which run up towards an hour. Which probably is going to include this one as well. But, um, yeah, I feel the battles we've done, and it, two battles per video is enough, I think. So, with that said, I think we'll go ahead and end it right here, and then we'll start off fresh with these battles, with ending these sieges at the start of the next episode. So, I will say, as I always say, hopefully... You guys enjoy this, and hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.